Few markets have increased in size and depth around the country more than craft brewing. From age-old ales to specific local microbrews, where there's beer, there's people. Yeah, I mean, we've really seen a, a pretty massive you know, paradigm shift in the brewery scene in Colorado. There, there's breweries in every town now. There's uh, a great thing about that where every town can have their own flavor. It also presents challenges to the, to the craft beer market as well. Well, it's really interesting kind of what's gone on in the beer industry over the last decade. Uh, you've seen craft beer really um, normalize and it's, it's become a accepted consumer good to where, you know, 20, 30 years ago it was very niche and hard to find, uh, whereas now it's, it's pretty commonplace. I mean, it's rare that you would walk into a bar or restaurant and not see craft beer on the menu. Uh, so it's really brought uh, kind of a, a maturation of uh, flavor profiles from a consumer standpoint to the table uh, really for the first time and that's really been a exciting and interesting decade to uh, watch the the craft beer scene evolve in the 21st century brew pubs and tap rooms aren't what you'd expect them to be they're vibrant energetic brimming with culture and a part of the community I think the, the creativity in the craft beer scene right now is, is really amazing. Uh, from exciting new labeling and packaging options to different ways of approaching beer and flavors to just fun events that people are coming up with to find different ways to get to the consumer they want to, they want to talk to. Breweries are uh, community-based entities really intrinsically. Um, and they have been since the beginning of, of really civilization. I mean, breweries are uh, go back to when civilization really started. Uh, so really, if you're going to have a successful brewery, you have to have a successful community and vice versa. Uh, so I mean, that goes to uh, having local tasting rooms for uh, local residents to come by and visit. Um, really, one of the things that uh, I would say most breweries focus on is helping their local communities. Kind of a successful community and a successful brewery really go hand in hand. Crazy Mountain Brewing Company isn't your run-of-the-mill brewing company. Crazy Mountain takes pride in their beer. With a brand new beer every week, they know discovering great taste means having courage to experiment. You know, Crazy Mountain is, is all about the people and the places that we're from. Uh, I think that our, our original location where we started brewing up in the Rocky Mountains and then having the opportunity to come down to Denver gave us a unique approach that's different than a lot of other breweries. Our people that work here every day and make the beer that's so amazing uh, allow us to come up with so many different styles and so many different ways to, to get in the new places. Our local stash series is a perfect uh, example of that, where we really get out there with the eclectic styles and push the boundaries of fermentation science and have a lot of fun getting different styles out as much as possible throughout the year. So yeah, it was a, a little bit of an unorganic uh, growth plan for us when, when Breckenridge Brewery approached us. Um, they were in the process of building a new facility from the ground up, at which time they really had an appetite to sell uh, the brewery that they had spent 30 years building. They just wanted to sell it as a turnkey operation. Um, and so that was unique. I mean, you'd never really seen anything like that in the beer industry go down. You'd never seen one of the, the largest manufacturing facilities in the industry be sold just lock, stock, and barrel. Um, so for us, it was, um, it was a very challenging deal to finance. I mean, we were a tiny company trying to buy one of the largest manufacturing facilities in the country. Uh, but the reason why it made good sense for us is it, it allowed us to leapfrog literally 25, 30 years of, of incremental growth. Uh, so it was a big opportunity and um, uh, we were able somehow to get it done. I still don't know how, just by kind of the, the hair on our teeth kind of thing. Um, but once we moved into the facility kind of overnight, um, we became one of the largest breweries in the country. Crazy Mountain was founded on one core belief, fortune favors the bold. With a decade of excellent beers to back them up, Crazy Mountain is pushing boundaries in beer every week. Yeah, I think we're going to continue to see uh, some really great lagers coming out in the craft beer world, uh, a continued evolution of just people pushing fermentation to all kinds of new exciting links and playing a lot with different flavors that uh, a lot of people can, can jump into. So yeah, for us, um, our strategy is really to uh, grow our distribution. We really want to be a, a national and an international brand. Uh, when consumers think of craft beer, we want to be one of the brands that comes to their mind. Um, so our strategy over the next few years is uh, getting nationwide distribution. Um, we're about halfway there now, so really just filling out the rest of the states. Uh, and one of our uh, business strategies is to build our brand internationally. We find uh, um, 
Growing our distribution internationally uh, lends a certain amount of equity for our, our brand value. Um, it helps us to go into New York and say we sell beer in uh, London and across Europe and Asia. Um, so one of our priorities is really becoming one of the, the main American craft beer brands internationally. To learn more, visit Crazy Mountain Brewing today.